your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. We headed back towards Tobello and anchored in this beautiful spot. The boys were in search of some waves and I was in search of some fresh fruit. When we heard shouting coming from the shore, we looked over and spied these kids calling out to us, Hey mister, hey mister. They were flexing and waving enthusiastically and they came out to our boat and delivered a huge bunch of mangoes, which we were so grateful for. <laughs> and even a couple of coconuts. When Brennan and Brody planned to go ashore to thank them, all the crew jumped ship. Oh, what's going on? They're all getting in. <laughs> Aww. I drew the short straw. The race was on. There was a storm brewing, and that evening, Mount Jacono erupted and we woke up to this mess. How good is this? This is what happens when you anchor in front of an active volcano. Look at the deck, look at that. Covered. Good old Jacano erupted last night and absolutely covered us in volcanic ash. As much as I hate um, covering the boat in salt water, it's got to be better than having this, this stuff on because it's, it's acidic, isn't it? Like sulfuric. Yeah, it's acid rain. So basically. it's just going to eat into the paint. So I figured while we've got a little bit of rain, I might try and hose the most of it off and hope that the rain washes the rest of it away. But look at this, look at that corner. It's so thick. We're gonna get our food and fuel and get out of here. You can see it kind of staining the gel coat too. Oh yeah, that's, that's why I want to get it off because it, it's like we've got a beautiful white boat it's just gonna turn it bloody black. Yeah. Gotta try not to walk on it either because it'll it, like we'll, we'll push it into the pores of the bloody gel coat. So. So I heard this bang right man outside and me and my mum ran out to get him because we knew dad had fallen in the water and he was saying help. We went to go get him, mum picked him up somehow out of the water and then I looked down and I see his ear like hanging off and it was gross and I sort of picked it up like that and I sort of just put it back on. But um, then Dave came over from Wild One, helped us pick him up the stairs and get his ear all glued together and I was freaking out trying to help any way I could. Up in there, I think there's another part that we've missed. All the super glues. So we've got to... Oh, sorry. Do it. 
You're just gonna have to let that coagulate, mate, because see all that open flesh on the back of the ear there? Yeah. You're gonna have to just, it's coagulating now, because it's basically raw, I mean, that whole top of the ear was torn off. Yeah. So, and that cartilage, you can just drop it back now, mate, it's gonna go to break. It was pretty rough. The worst part is because we're, we are where we are in Indo now. There's no going to hospital. You can't, I, could, I mean, we could have if it was really serious, but chances are with what we just did, Dave and Sarah have just sort of reattached my ear, the top of my ear to my head. I think, what have I got a split in my hair as well? Split behind your ear as well. I think um, I've busted a couple of ribs and my arm and my shin. Um, if you've got broken ribs, we're going. I don't, no, no, it's not. My ribs aren't broken. I think it's cartilage or something. I don't know. I, I know they're definitely not broken. <laughs> my nipple is sore, um, but my wrist, is, my wrist is that's yeah, bloody sore. And I think, I think that's just a big hit. Spray. Oh, you know when you hit a bone really hard, it's like, you know, you can bruise bone. I think that's what I've done. It's swollen and shit, but it's like I can move my hand, move my fingers without it hurting. So it's just painful here. But, uh, oh, the cut, my ribs are hurting a bit. The, um, but like you said, like I said, the hardest part is, um, you just can't go to a doctor. You can't go and see anyone. So Dave... And Kathy from Wild One came running over pretty quick. They reckon they heard me fall, so that's. I think Tabello heard you fall, mate. You hit the boat that that hard. It sounded like a boat hit us. Must have been a big hit because yeah. I, I, I've been I've been knocked I think out a you few fell times. off the roof. Reagan? You were on the roof last time I was checking on you. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've had some big head hits before and and didn't get knocked out, so. That must have been a good hit. Must have been a big fall. Mate, you nearly ripped your ear off. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll okay, put the so photos up. They're pretty gross. But, um, yeah, it was yeah, right down right down to cartilage. It was like a, the whole top of your ear had come off. Like it was a whole flap yeah. that you had to reattach. And I'm the only one that can actually stitch <laughs> between the two but boats. I don't know there was any stitching that to be completely honest with you the way it was <sighs> I think the glue was probably the best option and yeah. Sarah did as well when I rang her and checked yeah. they came they came over pretty quick and helped us out so yeah. Sarah and Sarah and Dave or you and Dave Dave and Sarah <laughs> cleaned it all up and re-stitched today I um, glued it babe yeah I think we'll leave it at that, eh? I was I bandaged him up and put a sling on his arm as a precaution. There was some residual bruising on his pectoral muscle and swelling in his wrist. But the ear was still on and healing nicely, so happy days. You wouldn't read about it, but look at what we woke up to the very next day. And have a look at this ass hat. So yesterday he falls off the roof and concusses himself and nearly rips his ear off. And today he's back up there. She won't clean herself. Yep, my biggest child. Stay tuned till next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.